experiment, do new things and have fun along the way. Life is so short and I've made sure along in my entire journey, I have had fun. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth, where I talk to artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Today, I have a very special guest, Melanie Hussel, owner of Melanie Hussel Communication Coaching, based in Brussels, Belgium. And uh, she's actually been a client of mine for some marketing stuff for going on five years, I think. So I'm super excited to finally have you on, and thanks for coming on the show. Tyler, it's just so good to be here. Oh, I can't tell you. It's so nice. <laughs> would, would you mind uh, telling the listeners a little bit about what Melanie Hustle Communication Coaching is and what you specialize in? What do I do? I help professionals to present their ideas more effectively so they make a bigger impact with their jobs and for their organizations. I help native speakers and non-native speakers so that we all have a voice. And I do that through four powerful communication pillars, language, voice and body, pronunciation for our non-native speakers, and presentation techniques. Now, I know, um, but the listeners might not, that this is kind of a new, relatively new venture. Um, what led you to start an entrepreneurial venture, which started as Speak Up uh, and then has now evolved? I started my career in London, and I had a corporate career, 17 years, and I worked in customer operations uh, supply chain, logistics, customer services. And I started in retail in Regent Street. And then I moved to Osram, which was then part of a Siemens the Electronic Giant based in London. And then my third company was uh, Diageo. They, they sell Tankery Gin, Smirnoff Vodka, Johnny Whisker, Johnny um, Johnny Walker, Red Label, etc. And I was based in London again, but I had a European job, and I I travelled all over Europe, incorporating the uh, service centres back into London. So I did that for seventeen years, and one of the things I absolutely loved was developing my teams. So I was always knocking on the HR door, asking for uh, development uh, opportunities and how I could upskill my team so that they could then go and move on throughout the organization and further afield uh, to do bigger and better things. I took quite a big career break after that. Uh, to raise my children, to come to Brussels. And then there were some personal issues that I had. Then I had a real itch to go back to work. So I looked at going back into my old industry. But when I had an appointment with a friend of mine, I saw that it hadn't changed Technology had moved on, but it was the same issues, the same setup, the same people. And I just thought, oh, I really need to learn and do something differently. Then I also looked at going into HR, but I needed a degree, a master's, and again, three languages and 10 years experience. So I decided to become an English teacher. So I went back to school, studied again, and I went straight into business English. When I was at school, I fell in love with the sound chart or the, the IPA, IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet Symbols, and that really intrigued me. So almost from day one, I decided I want to specialize as, uh, in teaching pronunciation because I considered that was more important uh, than uh, grammar rules. You need to be understood first time. And I had the idea of really combining business English with presentation skills. 
I bought all the books I could find on how to teach presentation skills. And whilst I was in the language uh, schools and going into businesses, which was huge banks and insurance and pharmaceutical, et cetera, I was asking them, what exactly are you doing with your business English? And many of them were saying to me, hmm, Melanie, we don't have these skills in Flemish or French either. And it was really then that I realized that I could really do something further with this presentation skills. And that must have been about six years ago. So that's really how I started my journey. You were pretty early along when when we got linked up, right? It was about four and a half years ago. And I decided I wanted to go out by myself. And I think I met you, Tyler, through one of my colleagues that specializes in teaching English to pronunciation to Japanese speakers. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, she said to me, yeah, I know this great site guy. Uh, I'll put you in touch. I think I'm sure that's how we met. And then your friends were like, why are you sending this American guy a bunch of money over over the Internet that you've never met before? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I said, because I trust him and I like him. <laughs> so when we started the the, the site uh, development, and I think it was about four years ago, I decided I wanted to uh, focus on executives C-suite level. So one-to-one coaching and to have the facility to not only teach in Brussels, but also to teach online because my clients then were asking me. So we were rehearsing their presentations here in Brussels. And then they were sending me an email from their hotel room in Sao Paulo in Brazil, or I remember another client in Canberra in Australia. And they were saying to me, oh, Melanie, I wish we could just uh, present one more time, one more rehearsal. You know, I've got another five hours until the conference. And I thought, oh, I need a solution. I need a solution. So that's why I went online. From the time you were working in your corporate job to when you when you launched what is now Melanie Hustle Communication Coaching, uh, how had the kind of the technology and the business landscape changed? When I left my corporate job, um, I had a phone, but it was like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even aware of how to use Zoom for uh, four years ago. It just the whole basics. And now I must be running for my business, I don't know, 20 applications probably now, about 20 applications. Now I'm running um, on my learning management uh, platform. I am running a 12-module persuasive presentation course, and I've got other six other courses on there as well for business English pronunciation. And I'm also working with an AI speech coaching app with a really super cool guy uh, in uh, Seattle who's working with uh, the Allen AI Institute. So really from... (laughs) <laughs> you know, not having a, a um, even a smartphone to, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's been hugely challenging for someone like me. What advice would you give to people who are thinking maybe it's too late for them to start a business or change their career? Because like, oh, it's, there's too much technology out there or whatever. It's never too late. If I can learn, <laughs> you can learn. I The children still now are laughing at me because I wouldn't have said that I'm even incredible on my telephone. So they have to help me with my telephone. Uh, But they say, but mom, you're using AI. (laughs) Um, And I've been working with AI now for a year and a half. So yes, no, it's never too late. Embrace it. (laughs) It's fun. Yeah, I think you're, I'm, you've always impressed me with the amount of how fast you'll pick up on stuff. Like, I would say in the early days, we were kind of more focused on just putting the pieces together. Um, And what's been rewarding for me is I kind of helped you lay out the basic framework of the website, but then you just ran with it and you really populated it with news articles and all the videos that you've created for the course, for the courses, um, and then all the different plugins and tools that you've 
like count uh, specific tools, Calendly, uh, Udly is the new one, the new AI tool. Um, so you intru- uh, you introduced me to Canva as well, don't you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Canva's great. Canva's great. I love it. How important is having a good team and people you surround yourself with? Surround yourself with to uh, building this this business up from the ground up. Well, Tyler is absolutely critical. You were my number one. <laughs> I'm my first business coach, Heather Hansen. And I only want to be myself. I want to be Melanie Hustle Communication Coaching. But I surround myself with a team. I think I've got five people working uh, with me on various projects at any one time. And I don't employ any of them. They're all working freelance. But for me, and they're all in different uh, countries and different continents. It's uh, it's just incredible, the power of the internet. But the fact that but we All of us need to be aligned so that I can achieve what I really want to achieve and that my clients really get the impact that they want. So for me, uh, collaboration and connection uh, and really to have an empathy between all of us is essential. You just mentioned that you want to be Melanie Hustle and you want to be yourself. And something we've discussed is how what works for one person might not work for everybody and you know your services are going to speak to specific people more than they will for other and it's the same way um our podcast listeners the way i present and the way i ask questions and create the podcast might work for some people probably not going to work for a lot of people but that's okay um so how how do you how did you kind of come to that realization that um your voice is what differentiates you and uh and, and sets you apart from maybe other your competitors or other people out there in the market many people doing what i'm doing are perhaps ex actors or vocal uh, or, or opera singers or they are vocal coaches or they are journalists or news uh, news broadcasters and each of these sectors come with a different skill set and my skill set really comes from presenting throughout europe and so I like to bring my my corporate experience in trying to achieve what the client really is trying to achieve. So I really focus on that communication goal. And from a linguistic point of view, so playing with the language. And that's the, the techniques that I that I teach and help people with are exactly the same for a native speaker as they are for a non-native speaker. The other thing that perhaps sets me apart is my focus. I can help with pronunciation. And it's, I don't know whether you remember this, Tyler, but my background is I studied biology. I really wanted to be, I wanted to be David Attenborough when I was younger. So I wanted to go uh, uh, and find new species. I was a real kind of eco warrior. Um, I forgot that. That was uh, 40 years ago. So, um, yeah. So, What I really love now is I help a lot of scientists. And so when they're talking about uh, T cells, immunology, genetics, that I actually understand what they're saying. So yeah, that's a little bit more about sort of my background and what I can uh, bring. And I love the visual side. So I have a, for me, slide design and visuals, which are super important when you're presenting online, is another string to my bow. How is it, how important is it to understand your potential client or customer when you're, let's say, creating this course that you're working on that you're going to launch in October? For me, understanding the customer has been critical. So for the last 10 years, I've been playing with new presentation techniques. Uh, 
and trying it out and seeing which works and what doesn't work, uh, which language work, which language techniques work, work, which slide techniques work when it comes to the voice or body language or the words you actually use, or perhaps you want a strong start. There is no one set formula. Everyone needs to be themselves. Everyone is unique and they need to be authentic. For me, that's really important. But on the course, they can choose which of these tools and techniques work for them and which which resonate. So yeah, there's a basket of techniques for them to choose from because there is no set way yeah. of doing things. Oh yeah, well, we're inventing it as we go. <laughs> Um, do you like Brussels as a hub for um, what you're building, or do you think what you're doing could work in any city or any country? I love being in Brussels, and actually, I think it's been an ideal place to actually start out my business. Because my business started, I started doing what I'm doing 10 years ago, and I was trying to empower non-native speakers to really have a voice, to show up and to be able to speak up, that I don't think I perhaps would have had the credibility, maybe I'm wrong, if I had been sitting in London or, or, or New York. But now, where the journey that I've come on and now I'm helping native speakers and non-native speakers with exactly the same tools, I think I could be based anywhere. Uh, what's like the easiest way people can come across as more confident when they're presenting? First, I think clients need to focus on what their goal is, what their end objective is before they open up their PowerPoint and start creating their slides when they speak and they deliver their messages, they need to focus on simple language supported by facts and data and to use strong adjectives. And the most impactful vocal technique I help clients with is pausing, that little moment of silence which helps you to eliminate your ers and your ums, which just rob your speech of clarity. Or to young people just starting out their career as far as making decisions and taking the leap and, and, and you know, advancing their career forward, what kind of advice would you give? Two things spring to mind. The first is to be bold. The worst thing can happen is that you fail But throughout my career, I've always been very courageous and taken risks, calculated risks, and had little hiccups along the way, but always have advanced. Always hungry to learn more new things and to communicate and collaborate with new people. So the first tip probably yes is to is to is to be bold. And I was one of the unusual people that I moved industries and moved jobs every uh, 4 to 6 years three times. If I was in an industry or a job where I felt I wasn't learning and I wasn't growing, then I looked for something fresh and something new. So yes, my first tip is probably to be bold. The second thing is don't get stuck in a rut and make plans and experiment, do new things and have fun along the way. Life is so short and I've made sure along in my entire journey, I have had fun, worked hard and play hard. And uh, I hope to be doing this well into my 70s and 80s. I don't intend to stop. I really love what I'm doing. And I love all the clients I've ever worked with. They've all been so inspirational. And I learn from them every day. And we actually have a laugh. 
I love 90% of my <laughs> I don't love every client I've ever had, but I love most. <laughs> so how can people learn more about you and what you do? If you want to learn more about what I do, my website, which is Melanie Hustle, that's with two S's and two L's, dot com. But thank you uh, so much for coming on the show. And um, we'll be we'll be talking more soon. Um, so for the listeners in, in upcoming episodes of the Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs and creative professionals to discover their paths to success. If you have episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail dot com. You probably heard this before if you listen to the if you listen to the show before. iTunes, five star, YouTube, subscribe, ring the bell, you know all that. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you're listening. I appreciate you, uh, all of you for for uh, you know continuing to support the show, and uh, and uh, big things coming in the future. Melanie, thank you so much again for coming on, and uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Yeah.